Goodness. <laughs> We're not doing that. How's it look? Look nice? Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome back to the hell, to the yeah, to the m -m 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 money. Hope your last week was utterly stupendous and that everyone you know and love is healthy during this crazy, crazy time. Okay, so today the old topic is how to invest into ETFs. We're gonna be using as an example my Robinhood $5 a day portfolio. And you guessed it, it is made up of 100% ETFs. Side note, what I just said about my portfolio being 100% ETFs is 1% a lie. You see, when you first join Robinhood, they give you one free individual stock. For me, that was Plug. Not Apple, not Facebook, not Google. Plug. It's worth $3.78. Thank you, Robinhood. Welcome to the channel. Glad you're here. Before we go any further though, this is something I need to say. This channel is absolutely not from someone who is a licensed professional at telling people what to buy. I have no letters after my name and I do not hold a financial planning license. This is simply one dude's opinion on what ETFs I buy in my portfolio. I'm not recommending anything to you. So if you take it as a recommendation, fuck you. Not the point, okay? Love you, stick around. Okay, so now, here's what's gonna happen. Before we start, I wanna say a couple of nice things about investing in general. Simply because I wanna make sure you and me are on the same exact page, in the same exact year, on the same exact time. I wanna make sure you and me are operating on the same wavelength. Does that make sense? Glad it does. To do this, I want to paint you a picture about Bob. Hello, Bob. You're so beautiful, cute. So strong, strapping, young, generous. You hold 15 town keys and are the lover of 35 maidens. All this popularity, Bob, has gone straight to your head, Bob. And you decide to join the ranks of small business owners. Oh no. <laughs> because you're such a stout pursuit fellow and a lover of the sea, you decide to open Bob's Fish Gallery and Emporium, where you sell the fine photographs of the tender fish along with your daily catch. Now, Bob, you have a boat, you have electricity, you have rent, all of these expenses total up to $1,500 per month. However, you're also making some pretty decent sales, which total up to $3,000 of revenue per month. So when you take your $3,000 of revenue and subtract out your $1,500 of total expenses, you arrive at $1,500 of total profit. Because you are the sole proprietor of that business, all $1,500 of that profit goes right in fucking ham hock pockets. You know what I'm talking about, B? You know what I'm talking about? Ham hock pockets. All those pockets. One day, after many months lining your ham hock pockets with greenies, Miss Strudel comes to see you. She's a plump, beautiful woman. She walks into the fish mart and she says, Bob, I like what you're doing here. I would like to give you $10,000 as an investment. You take Miss Strudel's money and you purchase a secondary fishing boat. Now you have two fishing boats. Two, I tell you. Two fishing, 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 fishing. Two fishing boats. Because you have the second fishing boat, you are able to turn in, instead of $3,000 of revenue per month, $6,000 of revenue per month. And thus, your profit grows. You steadily pay back Miss Strudel her money, $1,000 a month for 10 months. However, because Bob's Fish Mart Gallery Emporium thingy is doing so well, you decide to pay her $100 extra a month as a dividend. You go up to her and say, Miss Strudel, I, uh, I've been doing so well with the money you gave me. I wanna give you $100 a month as a dividend. So here's $1,100. And then you repeated that process for 10 months. And I have news to Betsy, thank you, Bob, replied Miss Schrudel. When she got home and she sat down in her big ass fucking armchair covered with a floral print of fish. A fish, it's a floral print of fish. Relax, accept, you must accept, you must accept. She began doing the math. 
She gave you initially $10,000. Over the last 10 months, she had gotten back $11,000. Thus, she had been able to produce a 10% yield, turning 10,000 into 11,000. Miss Strudel finds herself so fucking delighted with what just went on with your business. She puts on her moccasins and marches straight back down to the wharf to have a conversation with you. She barges her ass right into the gallery and she says, Bob, I want to invest $15,000 into Bob's Fish Gallery and Emporium. But I don't want just a div yield this time, son. I'm giving you $15,000 for 10% ownership share in this fucking company. Over the next five years, Bob's Fish Gallery and Emporium grows from being valued at $150,000 at Ms. Strudel's initial time of investment to $600,000. This means that Ms. Strudel's initial $15,000 investment has grown to be worth $60,000 if she were to sell her ownership share. This story about Bob's Fish Gallery and Emporium is a microcosm of the New York Stock Exchange. You see, when we invest on the stock market, we are handing our hard-earned dollar bills over to owners like Bob for a percentage ownership share of their business. When we give them that money, we are expecting them to use it to grow their businesses, grow their revenues, and grow their profits, turning our singles into hundreds. In times when these businesses experience a surplus of profit, they pay out a portion of it to their shareholders in the form of a dividend. This process of share value growth and dividend payout is 100% dependent on Bob working his ass off to grow his business with the money we gave him. Our ability to get a return on our initial investment is 100% dependent on Bob's success. On our side, the investor side, our desire is to earn higher dividends and have our investments grow at as high and a consistent rate as possible. Though there are many ways to actualize this desire, the way we're going to be looking at today is investing in blue chip stocks. The only way a company is looked at as a blue chip stock is if they have a solid history of growth and really good future prospects. Ah. The magic though, we are never going to be purchasing a single individual blue chip stock. We will not be handing our money directly to Apple or AT&T or General Mills. Instead, we will be purchasing ETFs or exchange traded funds. An exchange traded fund is traded on the stock market just like an individual stock would be. Uh -oh. However, instead of owning a certain percentage of one company, when you purchase an ETF, what you actually own is a tiny percentage of multiple companies. The percentage of what companies you own is decided by what the specific goal of that individual ETF is. Now let's jump into my $5 a day Robinhood portfolio and I'm going to show you exactly how this all looks. Let's start with the very first ETF I ever bought. It's called SPHD and it's Invesco's high dividend, low volatility ETF. It's a fund that focuses on high dividend yield. At the time of this recording, it is trading at 33.24 per share and it's at a current div yield of 5.534%. So far for me, the div yield has panned out to be about 15 cents per share per month. Like I mentioned before, this is a fund managed by Invesco and it tracks the S&P 500 index. The coolest thing about this fund is the kind of companies that compose it. SPHD is 100% comprised of US based company. The top 10 sectors that SPHD is involved with are financials, utilities, consumer non-cyclicals, energy, consumer cyclicals, telecommunication services, healthcare, basic materials, industrials, and technology. The top 10 holdings that comprise this ETF are Iron Mountain, Altria Group, Philip Morris International, Gilead Sciences, Williams Companies, Dominion Energy, International Business Machines or IBM, AT&T, Progressive Corporation, and General Mills. Those all combined make up 28.2 5% of the ETF. SPHD's expense ratio is 0.30% annually. An expense ratio is how much Invesco or Vanguard or whoever is managing the fund charges you for that fund management every year. Go 
a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun. The coolest fucking thing about this fund is that by purchasing one share of this ETF, you are buying into 50 of the least volatile, highest paying dividend companies of the entire S&P 500. You could go through and buy an individual share of each of the companies that are listed in that 50. But by purchasing only one share of SPHD, you are able to micro diversify your portfolio. The average return over the last five years was about about 35% give or take. That breaks down to about 7% per year on average. So in the end, SPHD is a super duper dope ETF with a low buy-in just to get your feet wet in ETF investing. Let's move on now to SCHD. It's the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. At the time of this recording, it is trading at about 48.72 per share. Its current div yield is about 3.7%. I freaking love this ETF. I found it after I had already started investing in SPHD and I freaking love it because the two seem to go together hand in hand. This is another fund that is definitely more focused towards dividends than growth. However, at the same time, its growth does outpace that of SPHD. One of the coolest parts of this fund is that for a company to be a part of it, they must have a history of at least 10 years of consistently paying dividends. Just like SPHD, SCHD is made up of 100% US based companies. Its top 10 sectors are consumer non-cyclicals, technology, industrials, healthcare, consumer cyclicals, financials, energy, telecommunication services, and basic materials. SCHD's top 10 holdings are ExxonMobil, Home Depot, Intel, Bristol Myers Squibb, PepsiCo, Verizon, Pfizer, Coca-Cola, IBM, and Procter & Gamble. Its expense ratio is 0.06% annually, so literally a fifth that of SPHD. Like I said earlier, SCHD outpaces SPHD in terms of of growth. If you click on over to Robinhood and take a look at its five year chart, what you'll find is that right before the COVID drop, it had brought investors 50.28%, so essentially 10% per year, a 3% better growth than SPHD. I've only been paid out dividends once so far with the ETF, but it has proven to be so far 44 cents per share. SPHD and SCHD are the funds I've chosen to be my initial foundation for my $5 a day Robinhood portfolio. However, funds that I will be adding to the mix very shortly are two funds managed by Vanguard. Side note, the people that manage your fund fucking matter. When you get in and you start poking around ETFs, on each one you'll see a fund management name listed. These are the people that actually choose what sectors and what holdings are going to be part of the ETF. They are also selecting what percentage of each of those things to be a part of the ETF. They directly influence a portion of how well or how poorly a fund performs. In the last quarter, Vanguard did leaps and bounds better than every other fund management group. While BlackRock, the runner-up, garnered an additional $10 billion for its fund holders, it wasn't even in the same ballpark as Vanguard. Vanguard gained its fund holders over $48 billion. I say all this to point out who you choose to manage your ETF matters just as much as the ETF itself. The first Vanguard fund I will be expanding my portfolio into is VTI, Vanguard's total stock market ETF. This is a growth focused fund with a div yield hovering around 2%. At the time of this recording, the stock market is closed and VTI is valued on those at $140 per share. Over the last five years before the COVID drop, VTI returned to its fund holders 60% or 12% per year on average. A whopper of a return. The coolest part about VTI is that Vanguard has diversified it to include the entire market cap spectrum. Large companies, medium companies, and small companies. The second fund I would like to point out is Vanguard's VOO, Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. Similar to VTI, VOO has a div yield hovering around 2% and it is a fund definitely focused on growth. At the time of this recording, this ETF is selling at 256.49 per share. Over the last five years, VOO pulled in for its shareholders 64% or 12.8% per year on average. Again, another hard hitting growth ETF from Vanguard. This has been a look at my $5 a day Robinhood portfolio. I hope you've enjoyed it. As you can see, SPHD, SCHD, VTI, VOO, ETFs are bomb. They allow you to diversify your portfolio across so many amazing companies without having to have the financial power to buy individual stock in each 
one of them. I will drop my Robinhood share link in the description box below. If you want to, you can click that and we'll both get a free stock. No pressure if you don't want to though. I signed up without that link, so no big deal either way. I hope that this has inspired you to see how you can diversify even a $5 a day portfolio. Keep on investing, stay strong, stay sweet, stay you. Always remember that. This is Johnny Strovlakos, this is Hell Yeah Money, and I hope you have a peaceful rest of your day. Thank you.